Hi, this is question number 10 in chapter 7. The problem reads, a 3,800 kilogram open railroad car coasts along with a constant speed of 8.60 meters per second on a level track. Snow begins to fall vertically, fills the car at a rate of 3.5 kilograms per minute. Ignoring friction with the tracks, what is the speed of the car after 90 minutes? Okay, kind of a cute problem. You've got this railroad car, it's putzing along. Uh, let's say to the right, I'm going to choose right away. Um, can, basically the reason that I chose that, to be honest with you, is because the um, sign conventions are easiest. So if I draw my coordinate system on here and I remind myself, hey, anything to the right has a velocity of positive, anything to the left has a velocity that's negative, therefore my momentum vector is going to be positive um, in both cases. So all these types of problems, whatever the type of collision that it is, in this case it's snow colliding with a railroad car over a long period of time, the amount of time that it takes to pile up like it does here in the sketch um, on the bottom doesn't matter. By the way, uh, this is before, uh, any, before any of the snow falls, and then this would be after. Okay, so um, regardless of the type of problem, regardless of how much time this all takes to happen, I can say that the momentum of the system before the event must be equal to the sum of all the different momenta in the system after the event. In this case, the event is all of that snow falling into the open railroad car over a period of 90 minutes. So um, I'm going to simply say that the momentum of the cart before the collision initially must be equal to the momentum of the cart uh, finally after all the snow falls. We've simply added some mass to it. So now I can say that uh, m1 uh, v1 must be equal to m1 times v1 prime. And uh, a lot of things I know. I know the initial mass of the cart and I know its speed. Uh, it's, both of those are given to me in the problem. And I can calculate, I can figure out uh, what the mass was after the collision, uh, m1, and technically, to be uh, good about it here, I should put m1 prime, because m1 before the collision and m1 after the collision with the snow are not equal to each other. So I, I should be good about putting that uh, hash mark in there to, sh to show or denote that it's going to change. But regardless, I know all of the things I've highlighted here in yellow. I'm simply looking for the velocity of the cart after the collision. So let's go ahead and solve for that variable. I'm now going to get the mass of the cart times the velocity of the cart before the collision uh, divided by the mass of the cart after the collision. And uh, I'm already uh, ready to substitute. So um, let's go ahead and do that. The mass of the cart is 8,600 kg. And... Um, the, oh no it's not, it's 3,800 uh, kg, so there's a small mistake here. So let's fix that. 3,800 kg, and it's moving at 8.60 meters per second. Uh, so there's my momentum in the system before the collision on the, in the numerator, and I'm dividing that by the mass of the railroad car, 3,800 kilograms, but I now have to add to it in the denominator the mass of the accumulated snowfall, which is 3.50 kilograms every minute, so kilograms per minute, uh, times 90 minutes. So in the, de de in the denominator of this fraction here, unit-wise, we'll see that the minutes cancel out here, and I'll be left with uh, 3,800 kilograms times 3.5 kilograms times 90. Um, and all of that, of course, is going to be equal to the uh, velocity of the uh, railroad car after the collision. When I do that and run it through my calculator, I'm getting about 7.94 meters per second is equal to the final velocity of the cart after the collision. Um, I've got two sig figs. Here's one, here's two. Uh, even though there are three in the velocity, I have to default to the lower number. So let's call that 7.9 meters per second. Of course, that's to the right is my velocity after the collision.